greetings, greetings, greetings. Back to nature, Africa. Back to nature, family and community. Back to nature, organic farms. Back to nature, everything. Because nature is everything, right? When we look at nature, it's a reflection of us and we're a reflection of it. I want to say greetings. Welcome to another fantastic, beautiful episode right here, um, not in the garden of paradise, but anytime I find myself in agriculture or in agricultural space or in nature, uh, particularly those that are practicing a sustainable, regenerative, permaculture, all different kind of names of uh, approaches towards food production that are more in line with nature, I feel like I'm in paradise and that's where we find ourselves here today at a very interesting place with a very interesting project that you'll see right behind me and I'm sort of uh, crouching behind the camera here because I, my tripod you know sort of went haywire on me and um, so we're making it work in some makeshift kind of way. Nonetheless uh, ladies and gentlemen let's get started with today's episode and today's episode is going to be ca we're calling it harvesting the sun not once not twice but harvesting the sun three times right so th three times a charm and uh, it's a sun harvest today because you know there's so much harvest we have harvesting of crop we have harvesting of water uh, we have so many different harvests but today we're going to talk about and focus in on harvesting the sun and so with that um, I don't think I have a song or dance today so we'll jump right into the episode you know here at back to nature we talk about the closer we are to nature the more whole happy at peace at ease we are the further we get away from nature we get into a state of dis-ease that's a root word of disease and so in that we encourage we inspire we motivate those within our surrounding and ourselves to strive to adopt more natural, organic, holistic approach towards uh, living, food production, thinking, feeling, knowing, and all the rest. And so in that regards, um, we're going to jump into our interesting episode here today. Now, let me grab the camera because you've got to see this to believe it. And you've got to believe it to see it. So let's get started. We are here at a wonderful place called Latia. Latia is a large stakeholder in the agricultural space here in Kenya, East Africa, and the African continent. They're known for marvelous elements as it comes and as it relates to the agricultural supply value chains. They're keen on sustainable agri-enterprises as you see, as they say here. Um, they train a lot of young people, a lot of youth, of how to understand agribusiness and all elements of agribusiness. But that's not what brings us here to Latia today. What brings us to Latia is a first of its kind on the African continent. This is a very new, innovative, creative, um, Let's just say, if you can think of what uh, cars are in the automobile industry and how the Elon Musk solar powered vehicles came and disrupted uh, the space or brought a new innovation to the space of automobiles, that's sort of what we're looking at here when it comes to agriculture. You may have heard of and seen solar panels. Those many of you were introduced to us 
with the water Maya video we were on our own solar panel driven um, water tower that brought up uh, water from our borehole and it was a very interesting innovation but this innovation here started uh, about a decade ago and it's really picked up steam within the last three to five years and this is the first of its kind on the African continent it is the combination of agriculture and photovoltaics aka solar and so what we are looking at here is an agrivoltaic system the first agrivoltaic system on the continent of Africa I'll, I'll ask everyone to sort of take a moment and Google um, agrivoltaics uh, into your Google the moment and just sort of read up about this very innovative approach uh, towards producing food in a sustainable way when we talk about food security, food sovereignty, etc. And so what we're looking at here are solar panels that have been erected at a certain height and that are able to allow for food production to go on underneath. And this is a research project that has been conducted by many different stakeholders. The site is here at Latia. And Latia, I believe, deserved to be the site where this system or this approach to agriculture was first tested on the African continent. Uh, however, there are many different researchers and other different organizations and uh, NGOs and nonprofits, etc., that are working to bring and bring this project here to life re as a research project that is looking at how do we combine the technology and innovation of solar, and it has become a lot more for affordable now than it was, say, uh, five years ago or so. And how can we be able to address certain needs that, or concerns with climate change that's happening, you know, on uh, the continent. And uh, when it comes to agriculture, you know that uh, water is so very important, moisture in the soil, um, the ability um, to find out ways of increasing yields and discovering new best practices working in harmony with nature. Uh, and so here you will see that this agriculture has been practiced right along with the sun and solar system. And that's why I mentioned harvesting the sun three times because here in the field right next to uh, where the solar panels are let me just show you a grid of how the solar panels are sort of laid out and uh, and the structure of them talked about irrigation, reduction, you know, etc. So right next to the where the solar panels are, we have the section that is an exact replica of growing the same exact items that you saw under the solar panels as a trial um, of finding out how do crops respond or how do crops that are integrated with a solar system perform out in the direct sunlight in places like where we find ourselves right now in Kajiado 
a relatively semi-arid location here in Kenya and the ability um, to find out if solar panels intercropped or integrated with crops can have benefits, uh, pros and cons. Uh, and this is a wonderful, interesting, interesting project. So that's what I just wanted to share because, uh, and when I mentioned harvesting the sun, obviously harvesting the sun one time here with the growing vegetables that you can eventually harvest, take to the market, sell. But if you can also harvest the sun a second time through the solar panels that can then be able to drive many uh, energy electrical needs on a farm of this nature or have you seen our particular farm as well when it comes to moving water bringing water distributing water etc uh, and through uh, that the ability also to store this particular energy and even if the possibility exists where that energy um, in a sense uh, could be distributed through digital means, etc. There's a lot of interesting research going here. We're just going to touch on the tip of the iceberg today. And I just wanted to show and bring this here because it's something that we're looking at. And we've been doing a lot of due diligence and research into this agrivoltaics approach to farming and the different use cases for it. I believe there are several different uh, also applicable uh, fit for purpose use cases that could be looked at um, but with climate change and with so much going on in the world today uh, we must look at how we can best utilize uh, the resources that we have available to us including the technology and is there a way to seamlessly um, bring technology back to nature in a sense, because all technology is composed of elements that come from nature. And so how do we bring that technology back to nature? And agrivoltaics is an interesting approach. So I just wanted, that's why we were here today, for sort of uh, unveiling. I'll be talking about a little bit of this in um, videos in, uh, to come. Um, but we were here today and I just wanted to have that opportunity uh, to introduce this agrivoltaics. Uh, initiative and project that's the first of its kind on the African um, continent uh, you know we always talk about coming back to nature coming a few steps to nature and nature takes a few hundred steps towards you right and so when we talk about even uh, kitchen gardens urban gardening having a small plant in the house on the balcony in a small backyard um, we also want to encourage the sustainable living as well so when it comes to looking and, and um, reviewing and uh, um, ways of sustainable energy production and consumption uh, we want to be able to look at solar and so we ask everyone to consider uh, integrating solar into your energy uses and needs because it's a renewable energy it's something that is an abundant I don't know if you saw a post or two I had posted uh, you know in some of our social media space and if you saw the size of the Sun in comparison to even our Earth or some of the other planets, uh, the sun is, uh, you know, in its abundance. And the ability to harvest the sun and uh, and then use it in a way that can be able to help to build a sustainable uh, world, so that we can um, have a world that we can bequeath and regenerate for our children and for the next generation is so important. So I just want to commend uh, all of those involved in the. Uh, solar uh, uh, all agrivoltaics uh, project here in Kenya first on the African continent and um, the too many to name but all of those who are involved and all around the world engaging in this agrivoltaics I want to say great job keep up the good work we look forward to the data coming out and to review different ways that we can use and incorporate this particular technology uh, to enhance food production, be able to uh, decrease the uh, compromised food systems, uh, and get people healthy food. So with that, that's our episode for today, out on location, just a short dive 
uh, into an introductory dive into agrivoltaics uh, and apoptotic. Peace and blessings. God bless. May the nature be with you. Peace.